Welcome back. There are many verses in the Quran that have been mistranslated and as a result, misunderstood. To address this issue, we have invited Dr. Mustafa Khattab and Abu Isa Webb, the translators of the Clear Quran. They will share some examples of mistranslations and how they fix them. Abu Isa and Mustafa, welcome back to our show. Thanks for having us. So I just want to pick up from our conversation earlier and focus on some specifics. Um, you know, in the Quran, there are a lot of words and phrases that are repeated. So is this the Quran being redundant to, to some extent? Well, thanks. It's a very common question that I get, uh, especially from uh, uh, non-Muslims. Uh, so there are basically different types of repetitions in the Quran. So some stories are repeated, some themes are repeated, and also some uh, verses or some uh, sentences. So the stories that are repeated in the Quran, like for example, the story of Moses, it's all over the place. Yeah. Uh, there are 50 chapters of the Quran that uh, deal with the story of Moses, either in detail or uh, just passingly, out of the 114 chapters. So 50 out of 114. And the second type is the repeated uh, themes, like the uh, talk about paradise and uh, the hellfire and judgment. And finally, repeated verses or uh, sentences, like for example, which of your Lord's favor will you deny in uh, chapter 55, Surah Rahman. So the first type, the uh, repeated stories like Moses and Abraham in the Quran. Um, yes, it looks like the stories are repeated, but this is used in Arabic as a proof for the consistency of the Quran. Because it mm -hmm. was re repeated over, revealed over a period of uh, 23 years. The stories are repeated over this long period, but still they're consistent. So it's a plus point or a positive point for the Quran. Number two, every time the story is repeated, the focus is different. Yes. So, for example, in Surah Qasas, chapter 28, the focus is on the childhood of Moses, how he killed an Egyptian by mistake, and how he fled to Midian, and he got married. When you go to Surah, uh, for example, uh, Surah Araf, Surah chapter 7, it talks about the persecution of the children of Israel in Egypt. You go to Surah Kahf, Surah 18, the focus is on the encounter of Moses with Al-Khidr, the man of knowledge. So the, always the focus is different. Uh, with, and for example, this is different, like uh, it's similar to, for example, the story of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four mm -hmm. different perspectives on the same story. Yeah. The focus is different. Uh, then you have repeated themes like uh, uh, the judgment, uh, paradise, and so on and so forth. Uh, it always gives different information uh, that doesn't appear in the previous surah. So, for example, in one place it talks about the judgment, how the deeds will be weighed, and, and how God will judgment, and then judge them. In another place it talks about uh, what people will do in paradise, the pleasures they will have. Uh, or it will talk about, for example, a conversation that the people in paradise will have with each other. And the same thing applies to the people of um, uh, the hellfire. Uh, uh, repeated sentences in the Quran or uh, verses like in chapter 55 and some other places uh, which of your Lord's favor will you deny uh, this is basically uh, an emphasis that mm -hmm. is used in the Quran and and it is always used um, in uh, uh, modern speeches like for example if you're familiar with Martin Luther King's uh, I have a dream it's yeah. repeated many times all over his speech let freedom ring several times no one got bored, so he repeated the statement just for emphasis. Abu Isa, can you relate to any of this? I guess based on your experiences, you know, reading the Quran from a non-Muslim perspective, and then now being able to relate to it. Well, it's good to have um, it's good to have sometimes those repetitions uh, when they're presented in a meaningful way because they can reiterate the meaning mm -hmm. uh, of what's happening. Similar to the speeches that the Imam is talking about um, in the Quran, it, it's reiterating the meaning. Uh, and and uh, Ar-Rahman is an excellent example where yeah. it gives uh, examples of of what God has created, and then it keeps saying, uh, it keeps repeating the idea um, that you should be thankful for these things, and then it lists some more, and it says you should be mm -hmm. thankful for these things, and it lists some more. So uh, so when it's presented in an eloquent way, yeah. um, in a way that's easy to hear and easy to have repeated. Um, then, then it really does bring your attention into it, yeah. Perfect. I think that context is really important in this case. Now, one other question I'm sure is on Muslims, I think, to a certain, a certain uh, extent as well, is what about, you know, there are a lot of, um, it may seem, violent verses in the Quran. How do you, is that the case or what's the deal behind well, that? 
Uh, in the Quran, there, there are general uh, subjects or themes, and there are also specific themes. So, for example, when it talks about m non Muslims, you can read in chapter 60, ayah number 8, it says that there's nothing wrong if you deal kindly and graciously and fairly with non Muslims. Be good to them, there's no problem. But there are some also other verses which are very specific, like in chapter uh, 8 and chapter 9 and other places, that talks about fighting and about war. And uh, we need to understand that this is a 1500 years book, like it was revealed 1500 years ago. So we need to understand the historical background and why the verses were revealed. So I made sure in the footnotes that I put the historical context. Uh, chapter 8, for example, uh, and chapter 9 was also revealed in, a, in relation to a group of people at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, peace be upon him, uh, who made peace treaties with the Prophet and behind his backs they always violated the agreements and they attacked Muslims. Mm -hmm. So when it says fight them, it talks about those who violated the agreements. In the, same ch in the same chapter it says, but if they respect the terms of the agreement, then honor them and don't harm them. Mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So it is not like a general invitation to fight. It talks about self-defense only in specific cases. Mm -hmm. And I know in our earlier segment, we, you know, we briefly touched upon, you know, why you did this translation to begin with. There, you know, English is, uh, is not translated correctly or accurately. Uh, the Arabic is not uh, represented accurate, sorry, the Arabic translation is not as accurate in respect of to the theme. So can you give me, I know you have a couple of examples maybe that you can share with us that, are, that, are, that were initially misunderstood and then you translated in a way that flows and understand, helps okay, on clarity. Sure. So basically I summed up the, uh, the types of mistakes in the Quran in uh, three types, mm -hmm. three categories. The first one, a mistake in understanding the Arabic. Then they did their best to translate, but the understanding is not correct in the first place. And the second type, they understand the meaning in Arabic, but when they translate it into English, it is not the right word to use. Mm -hmm. And number three, uh, misunderstanding the linguistics of the verse. So uh, they misunderstand the linguistics because they didn't study nahw and sarf, like rhetoric and grammar and semantics. So they don't understand the structure of the verse. So of course, in Arabic, you mean, and so yes, in Arabic, uh -huh. so the English will will not reflect the uh, linguistics of the Arabic. Uh, so, for example, uh, the first example here is from chapter twenty-eight, verse uh, sixty-seven. I'm going to get Abu Isa to uh, read the verse. So this verse says um, the the heading of this verse is about the true believers, and it says, "As for those who repent, believe, and do good in this world, it is right to hope that they will be among the successful." So here, it's uh, the the emphasis is on the idea that it is right to hope that they'll be among the successful, mm -hmm. um, which is often mis mistranslated or, ha or misunderstood. And how is that often mistranslated? Well, they say uh, perhaps Allah will forgive them. So one thing we know about the qualities of Allah that when He says uh, in Arabic, "Asa," perhaps it means I will definitely do it. Mm -hmm. So there are no chances. It means in Arabic. Uh, uh, it is right to hope that Allah will forgive them. So there is a high probability that He will forgive them. So it's not like 50-50. Which is reflected in perhaps. 99 mm -hmm. percent. Mm -hmm. And so the way you guys translate it now, uh, if you can read that again, it's, it's more clear, right? It's specific to right. that perhaps is removed and you replace that with another word? Right. So we have, as for those who repent, believe, and do good in this world, it is right to hope that they will be among the successful. Okay, so you chose to say it is right to hope and that just ta taking care of that um, in a, um, flexibility yeah. of sorts. Okay. Yeah, there's another one, same chapter, maybe the same page, mm -hmm. uh, IS 67. Maybe, uh, Imam Mustafa, if I can ask, maybe can you explain first what the misunderstood verse is and then we can go to Abusa sure. to clarify. Like uh, chapter 28, verse 67. Uh, the people of Korah, Qarun, who was a wealthy man, but was arrogant, uh, they told him, La tafrah. So everyone says in Arabic, uh, when they translate it, don't be joyful, or you will go to, the, to hell. Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong if you're happy, if you have money, like there's nothing wrong. But in Arabic, in, in the Arabic language, the word tafrah could also mean don't be pr uh, prideful, mm -hmm. arrogant. Okay. So they missed this whole point. Right? So now it makes sense if you say don't be prideful or arrogant or you will be punished, now it makes sense. So uh, maybe Abu Isa, can you clarify now how you guys have translated it? 
So here we have a section that's entitled Korah's Arrogance. So it starts with the context uh, of the story. And it says, Indeed Korah was from the people of Moses, but he behaved arrogantly towards them. We had granted him such treasures so that even their keys would burden a group of strong men. Some of his people advised him, Don't be prideful. Surely God does not like the prideful. Rather seek the reward of the hereafter by means of what God has granted you, without forgetting your share in this world. And be good to others as God has been good to you. Do not seek to spread corruption in the land, for God certainly does not like the corruptors. And here the, the, what we're examining is do not be prideful. Surely God does not like the prideful. So that just means specifically speaking to arrogance, right? Yes. Okay. It's not about being happy or joyful. It has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you have uh, another Yes, example. the other one is um, in chapter 3, verse 106. It says in Arabic, mm -hmm. So it talks about the people on the day of judgment, the believers and the disbelievers. Mm -hmm. So everyone says in their translation, on that day, the day of judgment, some faces will be white, some faces will be black. The people with the white faces will go to paradise. The people with the black faces will go to hell. It sounds very racist. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not what it means. And it's explained in many other verses in the Quran that it doesn't talk about the color. It talks about the uh, condition or the quality of the people in that day. So how have you guys addressed that in your translation? So in the section uh, heading, we actually start with uh, the joyful and the miserable. Okay. So the compar comparison in the heading is already there. Mm -hmm. And then when the reader continues, it says, On that day some faces will be bright, while others will be gloomy. The gloomy faced will be s To the gloomy faced it will be said, Did you disbelieve after having believed? So taste the punishment for your disbelief. And it's clear that these are disbelievers who are gloomy faced because mm -hmm. they're facing hell. And not physically, like, yeah. speaking of color. Yes. Okay, fair enough. Another example that is always mistranslated, um, it's a linguistic uh, aspect, uh, chapter 94, verses 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. So we have here a passage that is repeated, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى So what happens here, we have two words uh, that, are, that are repeated. One of them has al, like the in English, mm -hmm. and the other one doesn't have it. So in Arabic, when you have a word that has al and you repeat it, it means it's the same thing. If the word is repeated but it doesn't have al or the, it means it's a different thing. So for example, I met, a guy, uh, I met the guy and I gave the guy money. It means it's the same guy. The same guy. guy. Yes. Okay. If you say, I met a guy and I gave a guy money, a totally Two different thing. Yeah. So when it, it says in the Quran, and this is how everyone has it, uh, indeed, with, ev with difficulty comes ease. Indeed, with difficulty comes ease. It's repeated, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. In Arabic, it means, uh, indeed, with difficulty comes ease. Indeed, with that difficulty comes more ease. So it's basically the same difficulty because it has al, but two eases for the same difficulty, which is lost in mm -hmm. translation, but we made sure we have it. How did you, and how did you guys address that? So in our translation, aside from the headings to give context, we also ha um, found uh, repeated cases where we had to insert information directly into the text mm -hmm. because uh, Arabic um, grammar, of course, is different from English grammar. And in fact, the Arabic language is a Semitic language, whereas English is an Indo-European language. So um, there are many parts of the grammar that are dramatically different. Um, and they can't be understood simply by translating word for word. And even rearranging the words sometimes isn't sufficient. So when we inserted um, words that aren't found in the original Arabic, we used small half brackets. Okay. Um, they look similar to quotes, but they're square. Uh, and the reason why we decided to do this was because we found brackets uh, tend to indicate to readers that the information is optional. Mm -hmm. which it's not, because it's required for understanding. Any yeah. optional information, we put in footnotes. Okay. But if it's required for understanding, we put it in the text with small square brackets. It makes the readers uh, take it more seriously, and it also makes it much easier to read, because you don't have a bunch of bracketed information. We mm -hmm. found in one translation, um, a translator had brackets, and within the brackets, he had to include brackets okay. for better understanding. And within those brackets, he included uh, Peace Be Upon Him, which was a third <laughs> set okay. of brackets. That can definitely throw a reader uh, off at times. <laughs> right. And, uh, and so at the end, if you have bracket, 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 period, it's very difficult to understand yeah. exactly what you're supposed to be getting yeah. from the verse. So here we have, and again, the, the verse in Arabic, the only uh, difference is with the al. Um, but in English we have, so surely with hardship comes ease, surely with that hardship comes more ease. 
I know I could definitely relate to this because I learned that after I actually researched and came across a lecture and uh, you know the scholar actually talked about that so then I was like okay you piece one and two together so thank you so much for coming on I know you guys uh, you know this was very helpful especially as you explained uh, the misunderstood verses in Abu Isa I think it gives readers more of a reason to go out and, and pick up a copy of the clear Quran and really understand it for themselves so thank you so very much for coming on Thanks for having us. Hey YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.